Have you ever thought about this question? Why has the universe, which has a history of 13.8 billion years, reached an observable range of 93 billion light years? Theoretically, due to the limitation of the speed of light, no matter how advanced the instruments we use, we can only observe the universe within 13.8 billion light years from us. However, according to the Big Bang Theory, the most influential theory in modern cosmology, our universe is in an accelerated expansion at a speed faster than the speed of light. Does this violate the current situation? According to Einstein's theory of relativity, the speed of any object with mass cannot exceed the speed of light. But why does the expansion of the universe exceed the speed of light? More than 100 years ago, scientists believed that the universe was stable and static. It was not until the early 1920s that astronomer Ed Hubble used the world's largest reflecting telescope at the time to observe the Andromeda star and discovered that the Andromeda star was 1.3 times larger than the Andromeda star. It was found that its distance was far beyond the diameter of the Milky Way, which meant that it was not a nebula in the Milky Way but an independent galaxy, that is, there were other galaxies outside the Milky Way. Before that, people generally believed that the Milky Way was the entire universe. After several years of hard work, in 1929, Hubble obtained the spectra of more than 40 extranuclear galaxies and found that these spectra all showed the universal spectral line red clothing phenomenon. One type of Doppler bottle shift is the color change caused by the change in the frequency of light waves. For example, when a star is moving towards us, the spectrum of light will move towards the blue direction. If the star is moving away from us, the spectrum of light will move towards the red direction. The red one phenomenon shows that the distant galaxies are moving away from us. Furthermore, it was discovered that the recession speed of galaxies is proportional to their distance from the Earth. In other words, the stars are moving away from us. The farther the distance between the two systems, the faster they are moving away. This relationship is called Hubble's Law, which shows that our universe is in a state of constant expansion. In fact, as early as 1915, Einstein's gravitational field equation deduced a dynamic universe, which means that the universe is expanding or contracting. However, in order not to destroy the beautiful finite and unbounded static universe model, Einstein introduced a cosmological constant to make the equation it was possible to obtain a static universe. However, it was this constant that made it lose a major scientific prediction. Hubble's discovery became the most direct evidence for the theory of cosmic expansion. It is said that Einstein regretted it after learning about it and admitted that the introduction of the cosmological constant was the biggest mistake in his life. Hubble's discovery refreshed human cognition of the universe and established a new concept of the large-scale universe. In order to commemorate Hubble's contribution to the modern universe, the first optical telescope above the atmosphere was named after it. Since the universe is expanding, it must have had a beginning in the distant past, because as we go back in time, it will get smaller and smaller, and eventually reach an infinitesimally small point. Scientists call it the origin. Everything in our universe, including space, time, and matter, originated from this infinitesimally small beginning. The evolution of the universe that began at the point of the universe was called the Big Bang by the scientific community. The so-called Big Bang is just a metaphor. It is not an explosion that spreads from a certain point to all directions, but an overall, isotropic expansion of the universe. Since the 1990s, two independent research teams have used the most advanced equipment in the world at that time to observe the red coat phenomenon of EA-type supernovae and systematically study the expansion rate of the universe. Surprisingly, their research results show that the expansion rate of the universe has not slowed down but has accelerated. More than 100 years ago, most scientists, including Einstein and Hawking, believed that the expansion rate of the universe would gradually slow down and stop under the action of gravity, and then begin to shrink and eventually return to the starting point. This process is called the big collapse of the universe. However, the latest research results show that the expansion of the universe has exceeded the speed of light. In 2013, the Planck satellite released a panoramic view of the microwave background radiation of the universe, which measured the latest Hubble constant. That is, for every increase of 3 million light years in distance, the speed at which the galaxy moves away from the Earth will increase by 67.8 plus or minus 0.77 kilometers per second. 
Based on the Hubble constant of the expansion rate of the universe and the microwave background, the age of the universe can be calculated to be 137.99 plus or minus 0.21 billion years. Therefore, it originally took 13.8 billion years to reach the age of the universe. The expansion of space lengthens the distance that the light travels when it reaches the Earth. The expansion speed of space is the superposition of the speeds around the observation point. For example, with the Earth as the center, the farther away the galaxy is from us, the faster it will recede. A galaxy 46 billion light years away will move away at a speed exceeding the speed of light. The process is like the surface of a balloon being blown up. All the galactic matter is equivalent to the stars on the surface of the balloon. These points will move away from each other as the balloon continues to grow, but these points themselves do not move. Therefore, the superluminal expansion of space is not inconsistent with the special theory of relativity. We call this spherical space with a radius of about 461 light years with the observer as the center of the observable universe. Light outside the observable universe will never reach the Earth. If the universe continues to expand, all galaxies will eventually disappear. By then, the area around the Milky Way will become a dark space with nothing in it. Humans will be trapped in the Milky Way forever. The final outcome of the universe may be a terrible tear. After an extremely long time, the expansion of the universe will reach its limit. All celestial bodies bound together by gravity will be peeled and split. In the end, all matter in the universe, even a tiny atomic nucleus, will be completely torn apart. This may be the ultimate fate of the universe. Although these are just speculations based on existing theories, no matter what the ultimate fate of the universe is, since humans were born in the universe and learned to think, curiosity will surely prompt us to constantly find out the truth of the universe. What is hidden wave? As early as 1916, Einstein predicted the existence of gravitational waves based on the general theory of relativity. According to the general theory of relativity, gravitational waves it is considered to be an effect of the curvature of space-time. This curvature is caused by the existence of mass. The greater the mass, the greater the curvature of space-time. When a massive object moves in space-time, it will also cause disturbances to the surrounding space-time and release energy outward in the form of waves, just like the ripples generated by a stone thrown into water. This phenomenon is called gravitational waves, which can propagate at the speed of light in the universe. Space-time is slightly distorted, so gravitational waves are also called ripples in space-time. Anything with mass can produce gravitational waves, but gravity is very weak compared to other forces in the universe. The Earth moves around the Sun at a speed of 30 kilometers per second, and the power of the gravitational waves it emits is only 200 W, not as strong as the power of a household rice cooker. Only events such as the acceleration, collision, and merger of large mass celestial bodies in the universe can produce gravitational waves, but they can produce such strong gravitational waves. The source of gravitational waves is very far away from the Earth. When they reach the Earth, they have become very weak. The deformation effect is only less than minus 21 times the Earth's time, which is equivalent to the change in the width of a human hair between the Earth and Alpha Centauri, which is 4.3 light years away. Therefore, it takes extremely high precision experiments to verify gravitational waves. So how do we detect gravitational waves? The sound you hear now is from two stars 1.3 billion light years away. This is the gravitational wave first detected by Leg Zero on September 14, 2015. It was confirmed that Leg Zero is the abbreviation of the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which is also the first institution in the world to detect gravitational waves. The two instruments are 3,000 kilometers apart, located in Washington State in the northwest of the United States and Louisiana in the southeast. Only then can it be judged that it is likely to be a gravitational wave. Scientists have analyzed the signal of this gravitational wave and found that it is very large. After complex calculations and analysis, it was concluded that at a distance of 1.3 billion kilometers from the Earth, one of the black holes has a mass equivalent to 2.9 solar masses, and the other black hole has a mass equivalent to 3.6 solar masses. Under the influence of gravity, they revolve around each other for millions of years, and the speed of rotation will become faster and faster. 
and the distance will become closer and closer. Finally, in a violent collision, they merged into a black hole equivalent to the mass of 6.2 solar masses, and the rest of the mass turned into 1.6 solar masses. It turned into a powerful gravitational wave that spread in the universe at the speed of light. It went through the Milky Way and passed through the distant the closest star system to the Sun, Alpha Centauri, passed through Saturn and Jupiter at midnight on September 13, 2015, and began to approach the Earth. It was finally recorded by the Livingstone Laser Interferometer on September 14, 2015. Seven milliseconds later, the laser interferometer consists of two four-kilometer-long vacuum tube walls that form an L-shaped right angle. Each tube wall has a mirror at the end for reflecting the light beam. Because the distance between the two beams of light is 2.3 kilometers, the distance between them is 2.3 kilometers. The distances between the two beams are exactly the same so they will return to the intersection at the same time and cause interference, which will be received and recorded by a detector at the same time. If a gravitational wave disturbance is encountered during this process, the length of the vacuum interference wall will be affected because space-time will be stretched and squeezed, which means that the path of the laser will change. The interference between the two beams at the intersection will change. The detector detects the gravitational wave signal through this subtle interference. The laser interferometer of leg zero is so sensitive that it can even detect a change of one thousandth of the diameter of an atomic nucleus, which is rarer than a human hair. For the first time, humans directly detected gravitational waves from the merger of two neutron stars. In January 2020, researchers detected black holes and the great significance of gravitational waves for the first time. It can help humans better understand our universe. If the position of the moon is replaced by a planet in the solar system, then what would it look like? Let's first look at what the moon looked like when it was still in the sky. The average distance between the moon and the earth is 380,000 miles, but it can accommodate the other seven planets in the solar system. This shows how empty the universe is. Although the moon is not the largest satellite in the solar system, it has a significant impact on the climate, environment, and ecosystem of its parent planet. The Moon also helps stabilize the tilt of the Earth's rotation axis. Without the Moon, the Earth would shake everywhere. The environment on Earth would become very bad. What if we put a planet in the position of the Moon? But before that, let's put Pluto first. There will be earthquakes, which will lead to dramatic climate change and various natural disasters. The Moon's gravity is the cause of daily tides. Since Pluto's gravity is small, the tidal force will be weak which will destroy important ecosystems. Mercury looks very similar to the Moon, with a dark gray surface and many the crater created by the asteroid is only as big as the Moon's, so it will not have much impact on the Earth's tidal system and climate. Among all the planets in the solar system, Mercury is the safest planet to replace the Moon. If the Moon's position is replaced by Mars, the night sky will have this red planet. The iron oxide on its surface makes it glow red. At night, there will be no white moonlight shining through the window into your bedside. Instead, everything will be replaced by bathed in an eerie red hue. Mars' stronger gravity would create stronger tidal forces, slowing Earth's rotation and making the day longer. Next up is Venus. If Venus were in our night sky, our nights would be very bright. Venus is the brightest planet in the solar system. It reflects 60% more light than the moon and because it is 3.5 times the size of the Moon, it would force Earth into a binary star system. Venus the sky will be very beautiful and catastrophic because the two planets will collide and merge. Neptune and Uranus are both ice giants. They are similar in size and will occupy a large part of the sky. Uranus will also emit a terrible rotten egg smell. Uranus and Neptune are both 14 to 15 times the size of the Moon. Saturn has a diameter of about 1. The huge rings are 20,540 kilometers long and 200,000 kilometers wide. The visual pressure it brings to us may become a nightmare for giant phobia. At the same time, it will also bring great disasters to life on Earth because Saturn's gravity is too strong. If the Earth orbits Saturn, it will be in the position of the Moon. Jupiter's huge gravity will distort the shape of the Earth which will cause frequent volcanic eruptions and severe earthquakes may even tear the Earth apart. It must be said that although Saturn and Jupiter look very small when placed at the position of the Moon, 
they are actually much larger than the real giants in the universe. For example, Euskuti is a red supergiant star located in the constellation Scutum. Its radius is estimated to be 1,708 times the radius of the Sun, so its volume is nearly 5 billion times that of the Sun. In general, the universe is vast and has infinite power. Mysterious things attract us to explore the secrets hidden in them. Kepler-22b is a planet similar to the Earth. Its host star is a yellow dwarf star like the Sun Kepler-22b is in the habitable zone of this yellow dwarf star. Scientists have analyzed that its average surface temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. Its surface may have yellow dwarf stars, which are stars with a very long lifespan. For example, the Sun has a lifespan of up to 10 billion years. Can we contact them? There is a very serious reality. There is a distance of 600 light years between Kepler 22b and the Earth, which means it will take 600 years to reach the destination. According to our knowledge, objects with mass can never reach the speed of light to send radio signals to Kepler 22b. In fact, as early as 1974, humans used this method to send radio signals to the back of the M13 star cluster. The M13 star cluster mentioned above is about 25,000 light years away from the Earth. If the Arecibo message can be received by aliens, it will take 50,000 years. This is still based on the most ideal assumption. A greater possibility is that aliens have black holes in their science. Black holes are a type of celestial body predicted by Einstein's generalized relativity theory. They are formed by the gravitational collapse of massive stars after their death. Any matter cannot escape the strong gravitational force, even it is the fastest in the universe and even light cannot escape it. As a special celestial body with such strong gravity that even light cannot escape, we cannot directly see black holes in the visible light band. Currently, astronomers judge black holes indirectly based on gravity. If a star moves around an invisible gravitational field, then it can be determined that there is a black hole around the star. The black holes we have seen before are only the result of physicists' speculation. We combine data and theory with computer simulations to create images. However, at 9 p.m. tonight, six cities, including Shanghai, Taipei, Brussels, Santiago, Tokyo, Washington, will hold press conferences to announce the first black hole photo taken by the EHD, the world telescope that is responsible for the black hole photography mission. The EHD is a combination of several radio telescopes around the world. A virtual radio telescope in different geographical regions amplifies the flow of radio telescopes equivalent to the size of the Earth, and then jointly collects data and generates key targets. Radio telescopes distributed around the world can produce two batches of B observation data on one board. The hard disk carrying these massive data will eventually be exploded and transported to the data center, and finally uploaded to the supercomputer. The first photo of a black hole released tonight will be completely different from the computer renderings we have seen before. However, although the magnification of the actual world telescope is equivalent to that of the Earth, it is impossible to really see a black hole clearly. Therefore, the first photo of a black hole released tonight is likely to be just a blur of pixels.